Hello guys and welcome to this video to see how to make the shape of your temporary and definitive crowns based on the initial situation of the patient, okay? Using digital workflow this time. So uh, the last video was a very interesting video about a conventional method to do your temporary crowns and now we are going to do this with digital workflow and then uh, basically you can use this just by using Toro scanning and a very good laboratory with someone with uh, very nice skills of CAD CAM to do all your um, crowns uh, you know, in communication with you as being the dentist, of course. All right, so how to do that? And uh, we are going to start to see uh, this entire case to understand uh, all the steps. But first, let's understand that we need to record the initial situation of the patient, okay? Uh, you are going to do a preparation. So, uh, most likely, you are going to start from something. So, here we have the initial situation of the patient. For example, there were caries. This was confirmed uh, on the radiographic images. We're going to talk about that very soon. Very old restorations here, staining, okay? Even uh, caries, interproximal caries as well, okay? So you are going to start from a situation like that. And then what is the treatment plan? So the, of course, the treatment plan needs to be uh, directed towards the rehabilitation of the patient. And then here, if you have a CBCT, you sometimes don't need a CBCT. You can use the 2D radiographic images. But if you have a patient with tenderness to percussion, for example, and then uh, the, the, there is a suspicion of fractures or root cracks, then of course, CBCT is the most indicated method. All right, and here in this case, we do have a CBCT. Uh, that then, of course, I'm going to show you only these slices, not all the slices of all the planes. So, for example, the root canal treatment of the second molar is treated indeed, okay? Uh, you can see here on the axial plane, but here you are not seeing because the blue axis of this window, which is the blue window, is out of the... Uh, area of these root canals, okay? So it's just depicting the palatal root canal of the uh, first molar, all right? That's why the palatal root canal of the first molar is shown in all the planes, because the axis is basically centralized in this root canal. If you guys don't remember this, how to use CBCT, go back to my video, how to read and to operate the CBCT scans before continuing here on this video, all right? I will make the link available on the top right corner of this screen. Okay, uh, then that's the initial CBCT, initial images, okay? So the, again, uh, we cannot see all the carries and all the situations here, but um, what to do here? Uh, it was decided to do preparations of these four teeth. There were actually big restorations already in some of them, uh, and then uh, to do the new crowns. And, of course, we may base the treatment on the initial shapes of the patient. However, however, uh, we have this initial situation of this first molar, for example, with tooth wear of the distal cusp, okay, of the lower first molar. That's why we have a little bit of over eruption of the upper first molar, and we don't have the curve of SP, of course, right? I hope you guys realize that. So, we, we usually we would have a curve of SP, like this but now of course we don't have the curve of SP or at least not so nicely because uh, the distal cusp there is tooth wear and maybe a little bit of over eruption uh, of this crown of the upper first molar and then we don't have the curve of SP. Technically we should adjust the lower first molar and then uh, the shape of the upper first molar to have the curve of SP. But sometimes, uh, you know, the patient doesn't want to do anything on the lower first molar, and we are going to use the initial shape of the upper first molar to rehabilitate themselves. So there are caries, there are uh, older restorations and, and failing restorations, and then uh, reasons, overhangs, for example, or situations that we need, we want to do a prep now to do new crowns. All right, so what to do here? Um, First, of course, we need to create the virtual patient, as you guys already know. So now we have uh, initial CBCT and then the intraoral scans of the patient. So that's the initial intraoral scans. That's the first molar, a little bit over erupted. And let me see if I can give a zoom here a little bit. Okay, so that's the initial situation here, okay, of the uh, of the of these four posterior teeth that we are talking about. 
And then uh, we need to merge this with the initial CBCT. And basically that's what you got. Okay, so that's uh, the, the merge, the, co the alignment, the superimposition of the intraoral scans in gray and the CBCT in green. Okay, so what you guys are seeing in green is the CBCT. Can we use the shapes of the teeth from the CBCT, those green teeth? Yes, we can. Uh, but sometimes we have artifacts and the shapes of the crown are not the, the most accurate ones. But at least we have the entire shape of the root, because each tooth is segmented on this CBCT. This can be done automatically using some softwares like the co-diagnostics, for example, in this case, the implant planning software of Zircon as well can, can be used. By the way, that's the Zircon Zen Modelier software. We're going to talk about this software very soon. Uh, and basically, that's what you need to do the virtual patient alignment. Well, okay, uh, again, the situation of the first molar, not the best one regarding the curve of speed, but all right. Of course, you guys will navigate first to, uh, through the CBCT to check for lesions. So do we have periapical uh, radial lucencies or now hypodensities because it's 3D, okay? Do we have root fractures? Is the level of the bone adequate? So the marginal bone levels and everything is fine. So when you conclude this, then of course you are going to decide on your rehabilitation for this teeth. All right, so let's see what's going on here. I'm going even to increase this image a little bit if possible. All right, so let me just increase this image a little bit more. Okay, very good. Let, let's put here. All right. So then let's understand what's, hap what's happening here. So we have the alignment and then uh, that's the preparation. So of course you need another intraoral scans after the preparation. So you are going to do your very nice preparations. Here there is even a picture of the preparations themselves. Okay, so those three preparations made by my father, Dr. Djalma Cortes, uh, very nicely, and then you have here um, the, your preparations after the intraoral scan. If it's bleeding here too much, of course, you guys should use hemostatic materials, all right? So the Ultra Pack, for example, of Ultra Dent, the, the cord, we are, talk, talk, we are going to talk about this um, uh, retraction cord very soon, and then the hemostatic materials, if it's bleeding a little bit, and then you would be able to insert first a very thin uh, retraction cord, 000, exposing, so this cord will stay there, exposing the margins of your preparation, and then you would be able to uh, do the intraoral scan, okay? A second cord can be uh, used as well, like half of the cord can be inserted, but then uh, this cord will be, of course, removed, the second one, before your intraoral scanning, while the most thin one stays there to expose the margins uh, for your intraoral scanner to capture the margins, of course. All right, so this is even more important for digital workflow. But okay, so now the new intraoral scan is also superimposed, but you still have the initial intraoral scan of the initial situation. Even though there were old restorations and everything, there are shapes that we can use, okay? Don't forget that we can mirror the teeth from the other side. The laboratory will do this for you. You just need to have a laboratory or a planning center, okay, an international planning center, like the Beyond Digital Solutions, the BDS, the link will be in the description below, uh, to do this for you, to export all the files and give everything ready for you to install in the patient, if you don't want to learn anything about softwares. So everything is possible, uh, you need to have knowledge about this, that's why you are watching this video, but uh, you don't need to know how to design, how to work with the softwares, how to do everything, okay? That's the beauty actually of digital dentistry. All right, so now we have the intraoral scans of the preparations and we need to design our teeth, of course. So take a look at this. Now the, you, you are seeing the roots because they are segmented, as I said. So everything that is green is the CBCT of the patient, the antagonist arch and the occlusion of the patient. So the four intraoral scans very nicely here. Take a look at this. The other side also needs some rehabilitation. We have this situation here. Uh, with all the rest insufficient restorations, failing restorations here, take a look at these shapes here, right? But all right, so uh, of course we need to do in steps. First one side, maybe the other later. Okay, so now we have the, the preparations here. Now you guys are seeing uh, another mesh, so another shape here, the red shape, is the, which is the minimum thickness of the material. 
It varies uh, depending on the material that you selected. You can select zirconia, you can select Emax, for example, uh, lithium dis uh, desilicate. You can select um, any basically uh, material and then uh, the software will give you different parameters. Uh, so that's the minimum thickness. If the minimum thickness is crossing the antagonist tooth, then of course it means that you didn't prepare enough. All right, so that's very important. Now, which is not the case, here almost, uh, we almost don't have thickness here. Huh? So basically the second molar should be reduced a little bit more. Right, so it should be prepared a little bit more. Uh, but okay, so let's see. Basically, we are not seeing the correct angle as well. Maybe we still have thickness to, to insert a crown here. All right, so now we are seeing. Um, okay, so we seeing we are seeing that we have some some spaces there, and then uh, those are the preparations. So now we are seeing only the preparations um, of the this second intraoral scan. All right, the antagonist is there. And then now the virtual waxing, so the digital design of the new crowns. Uh, they were uh, done by a CAD CAM technologist, of course, using the Zirconzen Modelier software because it's integrated with the milling machine used for this case, which is the M1. Uh, and, but of course, you, you need a laboratory to do that for you if you are a very busy dentist, as most of you guys are, or dental students or uh, any other uh, professional working with oral rehabilitation, okay? But uh, there are all the procedures of virtual waxing. There is the video about uh, digital workflows as well. Uh, the videos about digital workflow, you guys can always check. Uh, and even for members, we have an entire course uh, showing how to design the teeth using different softwares. But okay, so now let's see those teeth were designed, okay? And then uh, we need to make sure that, uh, so now we are seeing, for example, the biological width of this patient, right? So we are measuring the distance between the sulcus of the epithelium, of the, epithelium, uh, of the periodontal sulcus, to the bone, to the marginal bone level, to the level of the alveolar crest. So that's proportional to the biological width. And then uh, even mounting on the virtual articulator, okay? So there are several guidelines for that. We are now positioning the midline and then in the occlusal plane, okay? The best way to do this instead of only mounting on the virtual articulator is to use a digital face bow, of course. You can uh, use a conventional face bow to have some measurements, but there are several methodologies to do this, but um, digital face bows or uh, digital devices to capture the position of the uh, bones and the face of the patient, like the face hunter from Zirkunzan, are very useful for that. Okay, now usually the uh, cast should be positioned nine, uh, 90 uh, millimeters from the uh, rotation center here, from the back of the articulator. We almost have there, so now we are going to position a little bit better to have 90. Okay, so now we have 90 from the first molar, from the upper first molar to the center of the rotation of the articulator. All right, so that's one of the guidelines that we can use if we don't have the, the face bow, right? So that this is one of the, the methods. And then at least you have now the, you can simulate the movement because now you have the occlusal plane. And of course, you're going to adjust a little bit better, right? So you're going to adjust in position in this um, occlusal plane. Okay, there are several measurements. That's not the purpose of this video. Take a look at this. We don't have a lot of space here. Okay, so that's a challenging situation, but all right. So uh, sometimes we need to re-prepare a little bit more, of course, right? And then scan again. But okay, now you simulate this, the, all the movements. So now protrusion is being simulated here. Okay, lateral excursion. And then don't forget that how we should do this with the principles of occlusion, just like with the conventional workflow. So canine guidance in the working side or group function, non, uh, no contacts in the non-working side, axial loading in centric occlusion, incisive guidance in protrusion by the antagonist incisors. So those are principles of occlusion that we are testing here. That's why you mount on the virtual articulator uh, to recheck your virtual waxing. Okay, so now you recheck your virtual waxing uh, or you can do this during the, the waxing, the digital waxing procedure, all right? We are just showing how this is done. Then canine guidance, non-contacts in the non-working side. 
All right, there is the video of occlusal adjustments, uh, teaching you guys all the principles of occlusion. If you guys want to review this, it's also very important, okay? And then uh, you would be able to, to finalize your virtual waxing, okay? Just like that. And then each of these files, when they are green, they are usually already been able to be exported uh, as STL files. And the STL files will be now uh, 3D printed as temporary crowns or even as definitive crowns with nice materials that are coming. Or else a uh, mute, in this case it was mute, using the Zircon milling machine. And then that's basically the, the case, okay? So now you are seeing uh, the four definitive ceramic crowns here, okay, they're just like designed. We still have this first molar a little bit longer than usual, the distal cusp especially, but okay, uh, here we have a little bit of uh, hyperkeratosis. We had this even from the beginning here, but absol absolutely no problem. Now, of course, you are going to clean everything. You're going to renew, to polish the, the existing restorations that can be spared. Okay, and then uh, we still have those small cervical lesions here, but all right, so this is uh, not a problem. You already cleaned everything, you replace the restorations, and the patient is rehabilitated with the principles of occlusion that you, that you collected from the patient, changing the, so passing the data of the patient to the digital world, and in the digital world, you calculated all this, you simulated the movements, and now you have a more predictable result. So that's why it's amazing to work with digital workflow. You guys might be asking, wow, and why he didn't use photographs to superimpose to do digital smile design and everything? Well, first of all, because this was not um, just a static case. There is this, the first premolar as part of the static area, but okay, so following the, the shapes, at least uh, of the canine and, and, and the other teeth, we were able to do a, a reasonable result for the smile of the patient, but yes, if you have uh, just the uh, maximum smile photograph of the patient, even though it's 2D, it would be imported to the Zircons and Modelier or ExoCAD or any CAD CAM software that you have, and then you would be using this for at least a static analysis, all right? Again, if you don't know, you don't have a software, then just send all the files to a planning center, like the Beyond Digital Solutions, and then they will do everything for you and just send these STL files for you to 3D print in your 3D printer or just send to your laboratory for them to do a, your definitive crown for you. All right? That's why dentistry is becoming so more predictable with uh, digital dentistry. The, re the recommended the reference of today, of course, it's our book, Digital Dentistry, uh, a step-by-step -step, uh, uh, guide and, and case atlas from Wiley Blackwell, 2022. I am the, the author, the editor, right? So this is uh, basically, that's the, the recommended reference. Okay, so if you guys like, please hit the like button and see you guys in the next videos.